Welcome to Mikun's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to tell you about yet another LJ3647 CPU, and this time I have got a Xeon Platinum 8272CL. In the past, I have already looked at 6268CL, and these two CPUs are very similar. In short, 8272CL has two extra cores, 24 against 26 cores, and that also means that 8272CL has slightly more L3 cache, 33.7 against 36.6 MB. The TDP package of 8272CL is only 195W against 205W of 6268CL, and that means that the clock frequency is slightly lower, 2.6 to 3.7 GHz against 2.8-3.9 GHz with the 6268CL. Unlike 6268CL, 8272CL does not scale its frequency according to the number of CPU cores used. Whenever you have 6 or more CPU cores utilized, 8272CL will not clock higher than 3.4 GHz. And that means that disabling CPU cores with this CPU makes almost no sense. Yet, I tested two configurations, 24 and 26 cores. But we also have similarities. Both of these CL CPUs support memory speed up to DDR4-2666, which is a bit of a disappointment. I would want to have DDR4-2933. Also, both of these CL CPUs do not work with my Supermicro X11 SPI TF motherboard by default. For the CL CPUs to work with the Supermicro motherboard, I need to use customly produced BIOS from iEngineer. At the same time, these CL CPUs have no problem working with my Intel S2600 ST motherboard. So if you plan to buy any of these CL CPUs, make sure that your motherboard has support for these. Looking at the memory performance, we can see that 8272CL and 6268CL are basically neck and neck. 8272CL has two extra cores, and so the memory latency is slightly worse, 87 against 86 nanoseconds. This means that the gaming performance will not be great, but at the same time, 8272CL has slightly more L3 cache, so it might be beneficial. The CPU clock frequency on the Cinebench R23 test are about 2.93 GHz when all 26 CPU cores are in the load. When testing a single CPU core, we have frequency of about 3.4-3.5 GHz. Modern operating systems often use more than several CPU threads or CPU cores, that's why the 3.7 maximum clock frequency of 8272CL is basically impossible. Testing Cinebench 2024, we have basically the same picture, but much to my surprise, in this test, 8272CL is able to keep slightly higher clock frequency. Here, with all CPU cores under load, the CPU stays at somewhere about 3.3.1 GHz, and when testing only one CPU core, frequently I can see 3.5 and sometimes even it jumps to 3.7 GHz. Anyway, when all CPU cores are utilized, we can see that 195W TDP package is the limit for 8272CL. If this CPU would be 240W, it would clock much higher and the performance would be significantly better. Nevertheless, disabling two CPU cores does not improve the frequency that much. In Cinebench R23 and 2024, the clock frequency goes up by 100 or 200 MHz, and that's not enough to compensate for the loss of the two physical CPU cores. In gaming, the frequency is stable at 3.4 GHz. For example, testing Assassin's Creed Mirage, we can see that all CPUs that are utilized are staying stable at 3.4 GHz. Unfortunately or fortunately, modern games, even though not optimized for multi-core CPUs, still use several CPU cores, and that means that the maximum clock frequency of 3.7 GHz is basically impossible with modern games. Performance-wise, we do not have any miracles or unexpected results. 8272CL in Cinebench R23 delivers very similar result to 6268CL. In this particular test, 6268CL comes on top with almost 26,000 points, while 8272CL delivers about 25,000 points. 8272CL with only 24 cores enables delivers about 24,000 points. 
So with the 24 cores we have slightly higher frequency, but the performance degradation is still noticeable. In Cinebench 2024 the overall picture is very similar, all three tested configurations are basically identical, yet 8272CL is somehow slightly faster than 6268CL. We have 1453 points against 1441 points. 8272CL with only 24 cores enabled delivers 1385 points, so the performance gap is there, but it is pretty minimal. Geekbench 6 is an interesting benchmark, and here 8272CL with the 24 cores enabled takes the first place. But overall all three tested configurations deliver almost identical results. All of them deliver about 13100 points with all CPU cores and about 1500 points with one CPU core. Sure, 6268CL that has slightly higher clock frequency is a bit above 1500 points and 8272CL that has slightly lower clock frequency with a single CPU core is just under 1500 points. Blender Open Data Benchmark uses every single CPU core available and it also completes rather quickly, thus 8272CL does not have enough time to reach its 195TDP limit. That's why 26 core configuration here takes the first place with 400 points. 24 core configuration of 8272 and 6268CL deliver identical performance of 370 points. 3D Mark CPU profile can be used to roughly estimate a CPU performance in gaming conditions, and here we can see that 6268CL is not the best CPU and 8272CL is slightly worse than that, but overall both of these CPUs are very close to each other. And that can be seen in Assassin's Creed Mirage. Here 8272CL delivers 114-181 FPS compared to 108-190 FPS with 6268CL. 8272CL has more L3 cache and that's why it delivers a slightly better 1% lows, but 6268CL has higher clock frequency and that's why it delivers slightly better averages. In Counter-Strike 2 both of these CPUs deliver almost identical results. Uh, overall, testing Counter-Strike 2 is a nightmare, the game does not have a built-in benchmark, uh, that's why the results may jump up and down. In this case, uh, I say that if you have a difference of 10 or even 20 FPS, that's basically identical performance. In case of 8272 and 6268 CL, we have literally identical performance with a difference less than 5 FPS, about 100 FPS minimals and 230 FPS on average. F1 2023 is the first game where I have seen a difference between 26 and 24 configuration of 8272 CL. With the 26 core 8272CL and the 6268CL are basically identical, delivering about 220-310 FPS. But if I disable two cores of 8272CL, the FPS number improves by about 10 FPS. Now we have about 230-320 FPS. Finally, a few words about the power consumption. Under Cinebench R23 test, my entire system with 8272CL consumes about 295 watts, while the same system with the 6268CL consumes about 350 watts, and that's a rather big difference. Under gaming conditions, for example running Assassin's Creed Mirage benchmark, both of the systems consume about 470 watts. Now, if I turn these numbers into efficiency, means points per watt or FPS per watt, we can see that the 26 core configuration of 8272CL in efficiency almost matching E5 2697AV4. 8272CL is able to deliver 85 points for 1 watt of electricity, while E5 2697AV4 delivers 87 points for 1 watt of electricity. 8272CL with only 24 cores enabled delivers 81 point of Cinebench score per 1 watt of consumed electricity, which is still better than 74 points per watt with the 6268CL. Looking at the game in efficiency, we can see that both of the CPUs are pretty much identical. Both configurations deliver about 0.4 FPS per 1 watt of consumed electricity.
So this is pretty much everything you need to know about this Xeon Platinum 8272C L CPU. Some might be disappointed that I didn't have time or power to run several more benchmarks in games or different kind of workloads, but the overall picture and the overall performance of this CPU is pretty clear. I believe that right now Intel LGA 3647 platform is pretty pointless. The motherboards cost way too much and the performance is not the best. In most cases, for most of you, it is much better to buy a modern AMD AM5 or upcoming Intel LGA 1851 platform. If you are looking for an ultra-budget configuration, then LGA 2011 version 3 with X99 Xeons is the way to go. Also, AMD AM4 with the second-hand motherboards and second-hand CPUs is very attractive. At the same time, if you need some specific features of LJ3647, for example, if you need lots of PCI Express lanes, and here you have 48 PCI Express lanes, or you need support for ECC registered memory and loss of this memory, then LJ3647 might be an interesting option for you. In this case, Intel Xeon Platinum 8272CL is an interesting CPU because it doesn't cost that much. The price is somewhere about 200-250 euros and that's about 100 euros cheaper than Xeon 6268CL. At the same time, the performance is pretty much identical and the power consumption is slightly better with 8272CL. Sure, with these CL CPUs you need to be very careful picking your motherboard. Many of the mainstream motherboards do not support these CL CPUs and you might need to modify the BIOS and I don't know how to do that. That's why it is better to buy a motherboard that supports these CL CPUs if for whatever reason you need to buy exactly a CL option. With this I have to say thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, bye for now and see you in the next videos.